bar graph and histogram can visualize the frequency information of data. There are other visualiz uh, visualizations to summarize the data set in different ways, but to understand the components of those visualizations, we need to first talk about how to summarize the data with a few numbers. In practice, any data set can be summarized with two numbers, uh, one representing the center of the data set and the other representing the spread of the data set. In any publication, it is pretty much a standard procedure to report a pair of one measure of central tendency and a measure of dispersion as a simple summary of data. So the uh, simplest central tendency measure is the mode, which is the most frequent observation. Uh, this can be calculated for any levels of measurement, uh, as counting is all that is required to calculate the mode. So let's take a look at our previous visual acuity example. To compute the mode, it is not really necessary to sort the data, but it'll be much easier if you do so to count which datum occurs the most. So if we, we, we can just uh, look at each datum, just date by data, uh, to see how many times each datum occurs. So for example, um, this 0.02 occurs once, right? And once, 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 twice, twice, once, three times. So 0.22 occurs three times, 2 occurs two times, two times, one, 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 one. Right, so the mode for this uh, data set, uh, so the most frequent observation is 0.22. So mode, Going to to log more. Another central tendency measure is median, uh, which is uh, literally means the middle score. By definition, median is the value that divides the data into two groups containing an equal number of observations because you need to be able to rank order between the values to calculate the median. Um, you can only calculate this quantity for the ordinal or above levels of measurement. And you cannot calculate median for the nominal. So th what that means is that you cannot calculate the median for the nominal level of data. And by the way, please note that uh, I'm going to use a different data set here than the previous visual acuity one uh, for the uh, illustration purposes. So the data here are the uh, number of Facebook friends your fr uh, Facebook friends have. So if you do have a Facebook account, then you probably know uh, what this is, right? So if you have an account, then you can go to your Facebook friends pro a profile to find out how many Facebook friends each of your Facebook friend has, right? So this is the data um, you know, taken. It is kind of a hypothetical data. Say, you know, this is coming from my own Facebook. And then these are the, so let's just say that I only have 11 um, Facebook friends. And these numbers represent how many uh, Facebook friends my Facebook friends have. So to calculate the median, then you need to sort the data first. Right. Um, then find the score, splitting the number of data into lower and upper equal halves. So here we have an odd number of data, right? 11. So n, in this case, n, well, n. Eleven, right? So you only have to find uh, the middle number, and so the middle number here is 
98, right? That's because from 98 above and below, you have 5 and 5, right? So we have exactly the same number of data, 5 and 5, above and below this value of 98, right? So in this case, the median, so I will say this is a median. One is so this is our median value 98, right? So now you think you know that the, the one of your friend is a kind of oddball, um, as that person seems to have an unrealistic number of friends. So I'm talking about this one, right? So over 2,000 Facebook friends, so it seems like uh, this friend is a celebrity or something. So you want to calculate the median again after you remove this celebrity friend. Okay, so you just remove this. Okay. Now, then the number of Facebook friend, I mean, the, the, the size of the data, right? The, the number of sample in this data set is now becomes 10, right? So now we have even number of data. Then how do we calculate the median? So in this case, um, Right. Um, you need to find out um, two middle scores, splitting the number of data into same, lower, and upper halves, and calculate the average of the two scores. So if you just look at this data now, these two scores are two middle scores, right? So from these two scores, we have four and four here, right? So the median is just average between these two numbers divided by two, okay? So that's, and it's 191, two, so that's, Ninety five point five. So that is our median number two. So that's just a median without this extreme score, right? But if you compare this value, ninety five point five and ninety eight, so regardless of the extreme value uh, or the outlier in a data set, um, the median doesn't really change much. Right. So, in fact, this is one of the properties of a median that, you know, this central tendency measure is relatively unaffected by the extreme values or outliers at either end of the data. All right. So, last central tendency measurement is the mean, um, also known as the average. Um, there are different kinds of means um, we can calculate, but here we will only talk about the most commonly known arithmetic mean uh, because this is probably the most frequently reported central tendency measure in statistics for interval and ratio level of measurement. Um, I'm pretty sure that you know you all know how to calculate the mean. Uh, here we have a formula to calculate a sample mean. So here the x bar, so that's how you read it. x bar is a sample mean. Right? And that equals to, and this symbol here is Greek letter. It's a it's kind of a same as it's a similar to the capital S, and this is red sigma sig. Right, and in mathematics, uh, mathematics and the statistics, this symbol sigma means adding or summing what's coming on the right. Right, so whatever comes on the right of this symbol means add. 
all the numbers on the right. So I here is have an index of data. So add the data from the first data to the n, which is the last member of the data. So add from the first data to the end. That's what it means. All of these are subscript and superscript, right? So that has to do with the data index here. So from i equals 1 to n. So here, if we look at this data, right, up here, this number of Facebook friends. So we have the first data i equals 1 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have uh, 11 data. So you add the first data, which is 57, to the last n equals 11, which is 22. So you add them all up to calculate the simple mean. Plus, 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 plus. Right, so you add all these up. And then what do you do? And to calculate the just erase this. After you add those numbers, now you divide this by the number of score, which is eleven, right? Then you're going to get the sample mean. So the sum, right, so, so sum of all data equals actually 3051. So you can use your calculator to see if this is correct, but at the total uh, um, sum of the score is 3151, and we have n equals 11. So x bar equals 3151 over 11. And this will be 286.45. So that is how we calculate the mean. Now, just for the sake of the illustration, because we just did this to calculate the median. Now, let's say you do not want to include that celebrity friend. Okay, so you remove, remove this friend and do the calculation again, right? So you just Add all the numbers except for that large number. So you do this sum again. There's sum one and sum two. It will become 811. Now our n becomes 10, right? Because we remove one out of 11 data. So the n is now, so that's x bar one. X bar 2 becomes 8, 11 over 10, right? So that's 81.1, right? So if you compare these two, you can see that there's quite a lot of change, right? Uh, depending upon uh, the existence of outlier or the extreme value. So unlike median, mean, the mean is heavily uh, influenced by extreme values or outliers.